OK, so uh, we're a little bit late, but uh, first, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you. Uh, my name is uh, Wen Bin Zhang from United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, uh, UN WUSA. Uh, welcome to the webinar on the announcement of opportunity for fellowship program for Job Tower Experiment Series, Job Test. And which is uh, one of access to space for all initiative from UN WUSA in collaboration with the Center of Applied Space Technology and uh, Microgravity ZARM and the German Aerospace Center DLR Space Administration. So before we begin, I would like to explain a few things about the logistics. So first to all participants, please make sure to turn off your cameras and your microphones. Um, second, if you have any questions or comments, please make sure to put it in the chat box so that uh, me and my colleague could address your question at the end of this webinar. Uh, later, we will put a questionnaire form link into the chat, so please make sure to answer that before you leave the webinar. We uh, really appreciate you to do that because it helps us to improve in every webinar we host. Also, if you use social media, please use the hashtag access space for all and the job test and also follow and tag Yun Wusa on Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook and Instagram at Yun Wusa. Last but not least, this meeting will be recorded and you can find the video on our website maybe a few days later and all the information announcement of opportunity application form you can find them also on job test web, uh, website later okay so uh, let's start our webinar today's schedule um, is listed here yun wusa and zarm would like to introduce our job test opportunity but before that we are happy to invite mr thomas mutterberg a representative from permanent mission of the federal republic of germany to address an opening remark he is our old friend and worked for federal foreign office in in committee on the peaceful use of outer space uh UN corpus uh, issues over seven years. Uh, Mr. Mosenberg, uh, the floor is yours. Good morning. Uh, thank you so much, Wenbin. Uh, uh, thanks to you and Hazuki uh, for uh, inviting me today. Thanks for your kind introductory words. Uh, welcome to all participants from, from Icy Cold. Vienna. Um, we in Germany are very happy to see the job test fellowship going ahead into its eighth round now. And we in Germany are also great fans of, of the work carried out by UNOSA and its program on, on space applications. We particularly welcome the office's commitment to capacity building activities such as the Access to Space for All initiative, which allows for broader participation in the peaceful uses of outer space. And our special appreciation is that this initiative is going ahead well in spite of the difficulties imposed by the pandemic. Now to the drop tower experiment series. With a height of 146 meters, the drop tower in Bremen is the only laboratory of its kind in Europe. It offers the most economic opportunity for short-term experiments under highest quality conditions of weightlessness. And by the way, it is also more carbon neutral than experiencing weightlessness on a parabolic flight, although the latter perhaps might be a bit more funny. This fellowship program is a collaboration between UNOSA, the Center of Applied Space Technology and Microgravity ZARM, and the German Air Aerospace Center DLR. It allows students from around the world to perform microgravity experiments at the drop tower, and while doing so, also visit the beautiful city of Bremen and don't miss out to, uh, to visit the famous Bremen town musicians, which themselves also form a sort of tower. And I now look forward to, to hear more from the, about the drop tower from Torben Kahnemann from Zarn. But before, I'd also like to mention that Germany's support to the office also includes the UN Spider program and its regional office in Bonn, Germany. Spider stands for Space-Based Information for Disaster Management and emergency response. This program has been around since 2006 and it helps in particular developing countries cope with natural disasters by using satellite imagery. 
Together with the city of Bonn, you and Spider is developing new methods to characterize drought and flood risks with a regional focus on African countries. And this will also make a small but important contribution to the implementation of the Space 2030 Agenda. Both these programs, Drop Test and You and Spider, underline how valuable a partner you and also is to us. And we look forward to working together in the future in order to make the peaceful exploration and use of space a more cooperative and inclusive endeavor. With that, I look forward to further uh, contributions and thank you so much again. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Musenberg. Um, before I hand over the floor to my colleague Azuki, I would like to take a little bit. Uh, my colleague and I will put uh, useful information and links in the chat box uh, already there. Uh, please check the messages in, ch in chat box. And also, if you have any questions and comments related to this webinar and access to Space for All initiative, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to leave your questions in the chat box. OK, so next I will hand over the floor to my colleague, uh, Ms. Azuki Moli, expert of uh, Yun Wusa. She will give an introduction to the Access to Space for All initiative and job test opportunity. Azuki, the floor is yours. Thank you, and then good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you, and thank you for coming to our webinar. Um, I am trying to share my screen right now. I am hoping it is working. Um, while it is loading. Um, yes, my name is Hazuki Mori, and um, I will dive into the details of drop test. But also, before we begin with drop test, I'd like to um, dive into some of the details about our Access to Space for All initiative. Okay, so the goal of the Access to Space for All initiative is to provide research and orbital opportunities for UN member states to access space and to ensure that the benefits of space in particular for sustainable development are truly accessible to all and how we do this is that we provide access to unique ground and space infrastructures that are usually too costly or non-accessible to developing countries and we provide these opportunities free of charge so why is access to space for all so important well first this initiative provides hands-on capacity from A to Z, from one to 10. So we're trying to provide a path that begins with small skills and something that leads to complex skills in a responsible and sustainable way. I mean, you can't learn how to ride a bike just by reading um, books about how to ride a bike. So you really need to um, move your hands and actually have hands-on opportunities. And this is what our initiative is offering. And what we mean by responsible and sustainable way is that the office provides structures to these opportunities to comply with international guidelines and um, many um, different um, rules that will make your project responsible and sustainable. Next, um, this initiative brings a lot of social impact to your country, the region and young generations. What I mean by social impact is, for example, it's an inspiration to young generations. In an example, Kibo Cube is a project we have under this initiative. And in Kibo Cube, we had 100 young students from Guatemala take part in the development of their first satellite called Quetzal 1. And 100 young students is a lot of capacity that can tackle the problems of today and tomorrow. So that is one amazing impact that we have. Second, another social impact that it could bring is that enlarges chances for more investment in STI, so science, technology, and, and innovation. In an example for drop tests, the team from Bolivia told us that um, with the motivation and with the momentum that drop, drop tests brought um, to Bolivia, new research centers and new departments, such as a new mechatronics department was built. So it can really bring in a lot of energy to your country. Next, it fosters international cooperation. Um, a developing country partner can partner up with the partners from the spacefaring nations. So the opportunity providers are mostly um, companies, space agencies, institutions from spacefaring nations, and you will be able to um, cooperate with them and bring in your project. And also with us, UNUSA being part of it, it is the ideal triangular um, cooperation. 
And also um, lately we see a lot of teams teaming up um, within themselves. So for the Chinese space station program we have, we saw a lot of um, teams that were from two different countries or three different countries with different institutes from all over the world. So it really fosters a chance to cooperate with your international partners. And lastly, um, through this initiative, it provides cutting edge skills that can lead to jobs and other opportunities. So all the benefits that I mentioned earlier in the slide all link to the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Access to Space for All as an initiative especially fosters SDG number four, which is quality ed education through providing these opportunities. But the technology that the participating teams achieve, the applications that um, they um, bring into Earth, and also the partnerships they build all contribute to these SDGs. And why I'm emphasizing a lot about SDGs, and I will keep talking about SDGs a bit more, but is because we are going to ask about the link of the experiment that you're going to provide to drop test with the SDGs. As you can see, space is very relevant and space has a lot of links with the SDGs. So in your application form, you will have to tell us how your project links and how it contributes to solving these SDGs. And to any of you who are not very familiar with the SDGs, I've put up some um, websites and I see my colleague um, when been putting it up on the website, but please make sure to go through the 2030 Agenda of Sustainable Development. And also, um, you and USA, we have a page that's dedicated to the SDGs, so I think that could help you link how space technology, how space applications can link to um, the SDGs. Okay, still on the SDGs, but um, to explain about how the SDGs work, there are 17 goals, as I mentioned, and each goal has a target and indicator. And it has, um, it depends on which goal, but it has a few targets and each target has basically a few indicators. For example, I've put up quality education, which is number four, and the whole goal is to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. And under that, for example, target 4.4 is by 2030, and then it um, helps you identify how you can contribute as a target. And below, um, to measure how uh, we are um, actually solving these targets, it has an indicator. So for this one, it will be the promotion of youth and adults with information and communication technology skills by type of skill. So um, if you go to the websites that I've shared before, you can find um, each goal, each target, each indicator. So I think that we're um, reading, going through that would really help you find um, connections to your project. And I must um, really emphasize that some of the indicators are very specific and sometimes you might not be able to find links directly to the indicators, but um, there are many things that you can do to help with the target and the goal. And I'm going to give you some examples. So as you can see, um, these are some of the examples we have with the Access to Space for All initiative. So um, number three, uh, SDG three, good health and well-being. So in our Chinese space station opportunity we have under the Access to Space for All initiative, there's a team that is researching about tumors in space, which leads to um, providing answers for health. The picture that you see on in the middle is the second round winner of drop test and they tested nitinol, which is a material used for medical field, and it's really used for ma manufacturing heart emulators. So the applications that of their research is going to the medical field. And the picture you see on the very left is from um, the seventh round team of drop tests. And this is not exactly what they were doing for the drop test, um, drop test experiment, but these are the same members that were part of it. And they, um, this picture is a picture of a low cost ventilator and the team members of the drop test were actually one of the members that were developing this ventilator to fight against COVID-19. So what I'm trying to say here is that the skills that are acquired through drop tests, through um, our opportunities, um, can be acquired, I'm sorry, can have a various um, way, sorry, uh, yeah, has a wide range of valuable 
um, applications. So what you learn through this opportunity is not only useful for whatever project you're doing it, the skills, um, the things you achieve can lead to different applications. And next goal, um, number six, clean water and sanitation. So the picture next to it is Quetzal One, which is a uh, project under the Kibo Cube. And they were monitoring the concentration of harmful bacteria over inland bodies of water. So this is one way that you can contribute to goal number six. And goal number five, gender equality. By promoting STEM education, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, and also quality edu education, it helps achieve gender equality and empower women and girls. And here I must really emphasize that today is the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. So to everyone here, if you're a woman, um, we should be proud of ourselves that we're here. <laughs> and of course, um, please, um, um, re we really value inclusivity in our projects. So um, number five is very important to us. Next, number nine, I think um, all of our opportunities really provide answers to um, number nine, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. But the picture you can see here is a prototype of the 3D printing um, device that uh, our seventh round winner of Dropcast is going to test. And next to it is the Quetzal one again, the satellite. And with the satellite, ground stations and other infrastructures are needed. So you can see that there are various ways that um, the projects under the Access to Space for Initiative link to the SDGs. Okay, now I'm done with talking about the SDGs and I'll go into the Access to Space for All initiative. As you can see here, we have a range of partners and we are very thankful for our partners because we can't do anything without them. And as you can see here, we are providing A to Z 1 to 10 skills to help you go through a, a path, a gradual learning path. For the hypergravity microgravity track, the objective is to develop experiments in space. So to learn how to develop an experiment in space. On the left side, you would see the ground opportunities. So drop tests, which is which I will dive into later. And then we have HyperGES, which is a cooperation with the European Space Agency that we use their large diameter centrifuge facility um, to test um, to provide opportunities in hypergravity um, environments. In the middle, you can see an identified gap. We do not have an opportunity yet for suborbital parabolic flights, but we are um, in discussion with some partners. So we hope to provide you with some opportunities here soon. On the right hand side, you see the on orbit opportunities. So we work with Airbus to provide opportunities on the ISS Bartolomeo platform. We work with Chinese manned space agency to provide opportunities on the China Space Station. And we're discussing with Sierra Nevada Corporation to provide opportunities on Dream Chaser. For the satellite development track, on the right, uh, sorry, on the left side, you see CANSATS, which is another identified gap that we know about and we are hoping to provide to you. But on the right hand side, you already see that we have on orbit opportunities. So Kibo Cube is an opportunity we work on with JAXA, which you can deploy your satellite from the ISS Kibo module. And for Avio, um, for Vega C, we work with Avio and you can deploy your satellite from their launcher Vega C. The exploration track you see on the right hand side is new. Um, the objective is to be able to explore space in many different ways. So currently um, we have one program called Ice on Scope, which um, we provide um, which we provide telescopes that you will be able to use to um, track debris or um, do astronomy experiments and all. So currently we have KiboCube, Vega C, and IsonScope open, and today we open drop tests. So we have four amazing opportunities that you will be able to take part in. And also for the exploration track, as you can see, we have ground analogs and beyond geo as identified gaps, but we really provide, we really hope to be able to provide you with opportunities for that. Okay, so let's dive into drop tests. Um, drop test is a fellowship program between us, ZARM and DLR and we started from 2014. And the aim is to provide educational or research institutions with opportunities to conduct a series of microgravity experiments at the Bremen Drop Tower in Germany. 
The drop tower experiments consist of five drops of catapult launches to be conducted within one week. And each experiment series is accompanied by an on-site experiment integration taking place one week prior to the campaign. So you will have two weeks in Bremen. And I'd really like to emphasize the five drops here. This is the first time you will get five drops. In our post uh, in our rounds from one to seven, you only had four drops or catapult launches. But thanks to our partner Zarm and DLR, they have generously provided us with an opportunity with an extra opportunity. So now the teams in the eighth round will have five drops or catapult launches. So why drop tests? The Bremen drop tower is one of the tallest drop towers in Europe and the experiment duration is 9.3 seconds, which is unmatched by any other drop facility worldwide. Also, testing in a microgravity environment rep represents an achievable entry point to acquire new knowledge. And you can conduct various tests in many different research fields, such as astrophysics, biology, chemistry, combustion, fluid dynamics, fundamental physics, material sciences. I mean, the list is endless. And lastly, the Space Administration section of DLR will bear the cost to conduct a series of experiments. So they are funding you for the actual drop experiments. And then ZARM will provide technical support during the campaign, along with on-site apartment for student accommodation. And then us, you and USA, we will be providing the financial support for the travel for the selected team. So basically, the team that is going to participate really has to all, all they have to do is bring, um, develop their experiment and bring it to Germany. And the fees around, as I explained, will be um, bared by us three organizations. Um, I'm coming back to the SDGs again, but drop test um, contributes to SDG 4 and SDG 9, and also I believe SDG 8, by fostering innovation and supporting education and training on skill sets for developing cutting edge technology. And as and as I mentioned earlier, um, through the applications of whatever experiments you'll bring, it, it will link to more and more sustainable development goals. Okay, and this is my last slide. Um, no, it's not, okay. This is the slide of the previous winners. As you can see here, we have seven winners from different countries and regions, and the experiments range from material science, engineering, medical research, fluid dynamics, 3D printing. So as I explained to you earlier, the things that you can do here are range from anything. So when you send in your applications, please don't don't feel that you have to go, you know, have to choose from any of these. You, you, you can bring in your new um, project and we will be really happy and excited to see more. OK, um, this is actually the last slide. I'm going to try to play a video. Um, this is a video from the third round winner from Costa Rica, and they're testing at the Bremen Drop Tower. You can see two sets of robotic arms performing a set of actions within the five seconds of drop. And this is mimicking the environment of a robot arm that would behave in space. So what I'm trying to say is, like this is a very cool experiment and you could be the next one conducting an experiment. So thank you so much. Um, I will be back again to talk to you about the um, details of the announcement of opportunity and the application form later, but I'd like to hand, it, hand the floor back to my colleague Wenbin. Thank you. Thank you, Azuki. Um, dear all, if you have any questions, please leave them in the chat box. We will answer them at the end of the webinar. So next, I would like to invite Dr. Sorben Coleman to give us a detailed introduction about the job test opportunity, uh, as well as the uh, 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 Bremen uh, job tower. Um, Dr. Sorben Coleman is the Deputy Scientific Director of the ZARM Job Tower Operation and Service a company located in Bremen, German, uh, Germany. Uh, Dr. Kohnemann is mainly respons uh, responsible for consulting the scientific customers and managing the overall microgravity experiment operation. And he has been working for DARM since uh, 2010 
uh, he has managed a large number of uh, uh, microgravity experiments at the Bremen uh, Job Tower within a variety of uh, research fields uh, such as uh, uh, astrophysics, uh, biology, chemistry, combustion, uh, uh, fluid dynamic, uh, fundamental physics, and material science. Uh, he's also involved in many innovation and development projects uh, like uh, realizing a gen next generation job tower system. Okay, uh, Dr. Kahneman, the floor is yours. Yeah, um, I hope you can see me. Uh, thank you very much, Van uh, for the very kind introduction and uh, very comprehensive introduction. Um, yeah, good afternoon or good morning, good afternoon and uh, good evening wherever you are. Um, in my presentation, I would like to introduce you to, to Zahm and also to the Bremen Job Tower. And uh, before I uh, come to my presentation, I share my screen. Um, I would like to thank uh, Yunusa very much uh, for, uh, for supporting also us uh, to promote uh, the drop test. And now I'm very proud uh, that we can start with the eight rounds. And uh, I hope there are many more uh, rounds. And uh, yeah. Uh, the participants uh, are our uh, driving force, so I would like to yeah, encourage you to follow my presentation, look what is possible at the Drop Tower, and please yeah, submit then your uh, proposal. Um, I hope you can see now my uh, first screen. It's correct? Yes, we can see it. Okay, thank you very much. So, um, yeah, let me start with Zahm. Zahm is the Center of Applied Space Technology and Microgravity located at, in Bremen, Germany, and it consists of three entities. So the, the Research Institute, so it's part of the University of Bremen related to the Production and Engineering Department. Then we have the Zahm Job Tower Operation and Service Committee, where I'm from. So we give the technical support to the, to the scientists uh, using the Bremen Job Towers. And then we have at Sam also a, a company called Sam Technik AG. It's a, a stock company and it's yeah, it's a leading uh, supplier of attitude control for satellites. So at Sam, uh, real space hardware is uh, in production. And with all together, uh, we created the Sam test center. And probably you know also it's very important to test hardware components before they have to go to space. And for this, uh, we have also at some some uh, nice uh, laboratories, vibration labs, thermal vacuum labs, and as well as also a, a, a centrifuge. And within this centrifuge, you can also use uh, uh, make use of your microgravity experiment because it's a very large one. You see here my colleague Henrik. Uh, we can hang here also a drop tower capsule into the this, uh, into this arm of the centrifuge. So um, all those facilities uh, you may also. Um, a visit during uh, during your stay at SAM, so we are happy then uh, to show you what is possible, and uh, yeah, uh, I hope you are also interested in such kinds of activities. So the the centrifuge and also the other facilities are often used have to qualify aerospace components. So that was a very brief overview. Now we come to the main part, so the Bremen Drop Tower. And uh, yeah, before I talk too much, so I would like to show you some pictures and I have here a, view, a video for you. Welcome to ZAM, the Center of Applied Space Technology and Microgravity at the University of Bremen. Here we are operating the Bremen Drop Tower, a large microgravity lab using the principle of free fall for experiments under conditions of near weightlessness. But how do we use free fall for microgravity research? What would happen if I had scales stuck to my feet and jumped from a diving platform into a swimming pool? It would show almost zero kilograms because I'm in free fall. The only weight shown on the scales would be the result of the air drag we could observe exactly the same reaction of the scales if we were jumping on a trampoline. In this case, the scales would show almost zero weight all the way from going up to falling down again on the trampoline. And now we will see where the microgravity experiments take place. <laughs> 
for a drop experiment, the capsule is pulled to the top of the drop tube to a height of 120 meters. From there it drops for almost five seconds before it lands in a container filled with tiny polystyrene balls, like these. The most extraordinary feature of the Bremen Drop Tower is the catapult system. It allows us to shoot the experiment from the bottom of the tower up to its top, from where it falls down again into the deceleration container. This way, instead of 110 meters for a simple drop, we can use a distance of 220 meters for free fall, providing a microgravity duration of almost 10 seconds, unmatched by any other drop facility worldwide. Another important feature is the fact that the free fall takes place in a vacuum. It takes these vacuum pumps one and a half hours for pumping out 1,700 cubic meters of air out of the drop tube. Thanks to this procedure, we can eliminate the air resistance almost completely and achieve a very high quality of microgravity. The experiment takes place in only one millionth of Earth gravity. Teams from all over the world and from all kinds of scientific fields come to Bremen to use the drop tower for their experiments. And the demand for experiment time is high. This is why we build another drop facility using a completely new technology which allows us to carry out hundreds of experiments every day. Stay tuned. Yeah, thanks my colleague Andreas. Uh, he gave, gave you an introduction uh, to, to, to the Bremen Drop Tower, gave you, uh, gave you some insights, and he talked all about the, the new system, so I will come back later to this uh, topic. Um, yeah, the Bremen Drop Tower, as you could see uh, uh, during the video, consists of an outer concrete shell, uh, and inside this concrete we have this uh, vacuum steel tube, so our, our drop tube. And um, with the, yeah, uh, with, in the drop mode, we will be able to provide to 4.7 seconds of microgravity. So then we drop the capsule. Or we have here in our cellar uh, a catapult system, which is able to shoot up the capsule of around 500 kilograms to the top of the drop tower, and then it comes back. And so we yeah, use the, uh, the, yeah, the double uh, way up, up and down. So then we are able to give you 9.3 seconds in microgravity. Um, yeah, one another remarkable point is that we have uh, a microgravity quality of 10 to minus 6, 6 G. So that's a very more more or less a perfect uh, area for for doing uh, experiments in, in weightlessness conditions. And um, uh, yeah, it, uh, if you would like to do drops or catapult launches, or you can mix it also, and then uh, we will be able to uh, provide you. Uh, three drops or catapult launches per day. We are limited a little bit by the evacuation period. So as you heard, so we evacuate this drop tube, so we suck out the air, and this takes around one and a half to two hours. Once once you arrived at, at SAM, so we provide you a so-called integration area. So uh, here's an example. We can also provide you laboratories if you need air conditions uh, conditions. And uh, here we can we can provide you tools, uh, instruments, diagnostics, and, and so on to do it. Each campaign or each uh, drop, uh, drop test series is is accompanied by two mechanic uh, or two engineers, one mechanical engineer and one electronic engineer. And uh, also my person, I give you uh, yeah, I, I'm the, the, your point of contact uh, for this purposes, so that we can arrange and work together starting from, from the first scratch uh, to the realization of, of the drop tower together. Your experiment will be accommodated in, in, in our drop tower capsules. You see here uh, some examples. So, so we have the short and long version of our uh, drop capsule. And for in catapult mode, we have, uh, yeah, we have only a different uh, payload mass of 165 kilograms. And, uh, uh, and it differs also only in the outer structure. And inside, we have this, um, the same uh, structure for the short drop. That means that you can switch between drop and catapult in an easy way. So if you, if you like. 
Each capsule is also equipped with a battery pack, so during the free fall you, you have to uh, supply your experiment with electrical power. And our CCS, it's a capsule control system, so it's a com real-time uh, computer system to do the commands and, and the experiment sequence uh, during, during the flight. So you cannot have, you will receive telemetry data from, from that, but uh, during the, some seconds it's, uh, it's it's nearly impossible uh, to do uh, telecommands and to, to uh, control your experiments. So everything is pre-programmed in a sequence, and then uh, yeah, we can do yeah, activate some valves and, and, and yeah, some magnet fields or what you need. This is all done with the CCS. You can use also your own computer systems, so Arduino boards or something like that. Um, nearly all commercial hardware uh, can be used in our job. Uh, capsule. So you see here uh, an, an overview. So first of all, with some uh, facts and figures. So we started with Operation 1990. So we had more than 9,000 drops or catapult launches so far. A lot of different kind of experiments have been conducted, and most of them are in, 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 the, in the framework uh, or in, in cooperation with, uh, with with our framework contractor and DLR and ESA. So First of all, uh, yeah, uh, research under space funding means uh, fundamental research, but you can also do technology development. So it means it, it means uh, mission preparation for space missions, sonic rocket missions. I would say, um, as you already heard by uh, Hazuki in her presentation, so we had a, a variety of of uh, different research which are possible to be conducted at our uh, job tower facility, and also in this short time uh, uh, um, frame of uh, up to 9.3 uh, seconds. For this purpose, um, yeah, if you have some ideas and you would like to know some more insights, I would encourage you to go to our website and then we have a database there uh, with uh, some former uh, drop tower projects and, and also still ongoing uh, drop tower projects. We have to go then on our website and then uh, under drop tower and projects, you will come to this uh, web page and then you can click here uh, to the different uh, research fields. And uh, so you see here astrophysics, biology, uh, biology, chemistry, and also former drop test experiments and, and drop test thesis experiments with a similar program uh, to drop test, combustion as well, and fluid dynamics, fundamental physics, material science. It depends uh, on what, what you are interested in, and probably you can get there some information what have been done in our facility or what uh, what can be new, newly done. So um, you are the driver uh, for, for that. If you click then, uh, for example, here in fundamental physics, you click on more or on the, on the, on the name, then you will come to a further page, then you you will see then an, an overview about uh, the setup, so some basic information and, and where it's come from and uh, who is a, a supporting agency and so on and who is involved. This is also important. Probably if you have some questions, so then you can, uh, yeah, I would say to uh, to, to Google uh, this, this research groups and look what they do and look in, in different kind of uh, um, publication, for instance. Because if you could scroll down, then you can also come to the pub, uh, related publications. You can look at those publications, how they prepared the experiment. And uh, if you're really interested, so I can also establish a contact probably to some research uh, teams. And they, I think they are keen to, uh, to give you some uh, um, yeah, uh, yeah, insights or experiences what they have done in our facility, how to uh, prepare your experiment and how to develop a drop tower experiment. Furthermore, uh, we have also, it's really new, uh, a YouTube channel, SAM YouTube channel. So go to YouTube and uh, write SAM, then you will come to this, to this page. And we have also some uh, interviews with uh, some scientists. Um, here it's uh, written in German, but uh, the, the, they talk in English. So they give you some ideas how they or what they do, uh, what they did at, at our facility, and and you will find also uh, all of our videos uh, here on on the website. So for further information, please also look at our YouTube channel. Um, yeah, at the beginning, I, I I said that 
it's also important uh, to prepare some missions. So if you have a mind to prepare a sounding rocket mission or also uh, 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 a space mission, so at on, I on ISS or something, and you have a, a small breadboard or a, a small component uh, which should be tested under microgravity conditions, and then I think the Bremen Dock Tower is a, a very bad, a very good a starting point and could be then the stepping stone uh, into into space. And yeah, what you can do is also you can probe your experiment parameters, so or 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 you get also the first uh, first results of microgravity, and based on that you can further develop uh, your setup for a later space mission. Especially uh, an example could be an accelerometer, uh, which should should be calibrated under microgravity conditions, so to get rid of the uh, bias effects. Uh, uh, and for this purpose, we have the catapult system. So we have a perfect turning point because uh, the capsule is moving up and downwards. So then we move. We have one one point is yeah, uh, and the, a very high uh, at the top. So then um, then you have per perfect micro uh, prime micro microgravity conditions. So almost zero uh, gravity. So another picture. Yeah, uh, going further here. Examples by DLR uh, sounding rockets. And we did also some preparation for Blue Origin flights, so there are some new uh, uh, opportunities, also probably later Dream Chaser, so uh, Hazuki mentioned it. So if you would like to go further in your way, yeah, start at the Bremen Block Tower, test your uh, equipment, increase your technology readiness level, and then probably uh, apply for uh, further options like the uh, Dream Chaser at, at UNOSA, for instance. Yeah, so there are plenty of options uh, you can use. Yeah, coming back to this slide, um, I want to show you. Yeah, I mentioned here again. Yeah, you know, uh, drop test, uh, but we have uh, drop your thesis, a similar program. We also have Rexus Boxes program, so Sonic Rocket program, but is uh, open to uh, students from Europe or or Germany. So let me go further into details uh, and drop tests. Yeah, the drop test program. Um, yeah, as uh, Hasuki already mentioned, uh, it's a uh, it's a, a cooperation between UNOSA DLR and SAM. We started in 2014. Uh, Here's some some further uh, uh, information you you, uh, you already heard. So, but I would like to emphasize here: so it's a real space micro research project, and you could, could be your, your first yeah stepping stone into the uh, the space uh, research areas or space technology uh, space technology areas. Um, I would like to emphasize here a little bit the drop test schedule. So we changed it uh, since the last cycles. Uh, this uh, with the eighth cycle we. We move from from winter time to summer time, so it means that the announcement opportunity will not be open uh, will be now open until June. Then we have the selection in July. Then you have time from you know, mid July or August to May, end of May, to prepare your experiments. Um, during that time, we accompany you, so technical uh, we can give you yeah uh, we consult you on technical aspect all technical aspects, so we help you. And um, yeah, you have to deliver a first experiment progress report in November. Then we will do a kind of a CDR, so a critical design review. And then um, yeah, you proceed with uh, building your hardware and, and so on. And then finally, you have to submit also a second report. So that will be next year, February. And um, yeah, and then uh, yeah, we go further to the to the campaign. For the experiment series in June, so the end of June, beginning of July, you have the concrete uh, dates, and uh, yeah, uh, drop tests will end then with the with the final report, which is uh, due uh, and at the end of September 2022. Yeah, here's some information about the selection process. Uh, main messages here so that we consult you, we can provide you drawings, we can also Manufacture some some hardware here, so especially some mounts. Uh, how to mount your hardware in, inside the capsule? So this is more our part, but you should concentrate then on your your experiments, uh, your your setup uh, at your home laboratory. As also uh, Hazuki mentioned, so experiments consists of an integration week and a and a flight week. So that means 
you are you, are st you will stay two weeks at uh, at the premium drop tower. The first week it is, uh, is dedicated for the integration. So then we work together here on site to, uh, um, yeah, create your your capsule, your drop tower capsule. And the second week you will have the drops of catapult launch, and usually one drop or catapult launch per day, so that we have enough time to prepare your experiments. And then on site we are able to provide you further hardware like high speed camera systems laser systems and ma many things more. So please ask us was, uh, what, what is possible and uh, we try our best to make it happen. Yeah, my last point here um, to the schedule. So uh, the students will be accommodated in, in our apartment so you can sleep next to your experiment. Uh, and um, and I, uh, our apartment is very convenient. It's a group with a kitchen, a refrigerator and, and so on. And uh, yeah, we have two separate bedrooms with two beds, uh, beds uh, in each uh, room. The academic supervisor will be accommodated uh, on a, in, a, uh, in a hotel. Um, yeah, on the university campus, so it's a some walking distance. Yeah, coming to, la to my last point uh, of my presentation, so gravity tower where you So my colleague Andreas Giese mentioned it in the in the first uh, video. Now I will show you. I'd like to show you a second video about the new facility at Samria, which is still in the uh, construction here at the moment. Welcome to the Bremen Drop Tower, where we carry out experiments under microgravity conditions. By creating a vacuum inside the drop tube, we are able to achieve a microgravity quality of one millionth of Earth gravity. But this takes a preparation time of 100 minutes before every drop. However, there are many experiments which require a much higher repetition rate than we can offer today. Well, this is our solution. Let me introduce you to the brand new microgravity facility we are working on right now, the Gravitower Bremen prototype. This new facility achieves a similarly high microgravity quality as the existing Bremen drop tower, but without a vacuum. To achieve this, the air resistance is not eliminated, but compensated by a slider that encloses the experiment during pre-fall. The experiment and the slider are accelerated from the bottom of the tower as in the existing catapult of the Bremen drop tower. This is done by a rope drive with a very low initial acceleration in order to minimize structural vibrations. This reduces the vibrations transmitted to the experiment even more. The slider acts as a shield from the air drag, like a contact-free vehicle brought to the exact same speed as the experiment during free fall. Inside the slider, there is no relative velocity between air and experiment. Towards the end of the free fall, the experiment is recoupled to the slider and both are decelerated by the rope drop. The advantages of the new system are obvious. The Sigete Bipro scientists can carry out hundreds of experiments every day with a microgravity duration of two and a half seconds. They can bring their experiments here and operate the whole system using this user-friendly control station. All safety functions are fully automated to allow users to focus only on their experiments. This means, compared to similar microgravity facilities worldwide, ZAM can offer the longest microgravity duration in the Drop Tower Bremen, as well as the highest repetition rate for individual experiment setups in the Gitterbild Pro. Okay. Some further insights. Yeah. Um, I hope you you get you get you got the idea behind this uh, Gravitower Bremen Pro, so this uh, this prototype type system we are currently uh, as which is currently under construction at our integration hall. So this is, as you see later, some pictures or the next slide. And once again, so it's it, it's it's work, it's working like an elevator system. So you, we have here the slider system, which can move upwards and downwards by a rope drive system. 
And inside this, this uh, slider, we have the standard catapult or short drop capsule. So then it means that you can switch between both or three facilities, drop mode, catapult, and, and GTB uh, mode. And here it's moving upwards. And then after a certain acceleration phase, we this capsule is detached inside the slider. It's a and then it's a freely falling uh, object inside, moving upwards and downwards and stop together. So it's a, similar to that, that when you are in an elevator, the elevator moves you upwards and then stop a while. And, and then you move, or you, you jump a little bit upwards. And after that, only the elevator only controls the distance you know, between you and the wall. So then you are a freely falling object and you, you, uh, you, know, you, you can consider yourself in weightlessness. And you know, with this uh, 60 meters high device, um, we are able to provide you two and a half seconds. And this is our prototype to develop a further dedicated tower. So a second big, bigger tower, uh, which could be able then uh, to, uh, to have eight seconds in microgravity. So it's a, a more or less, it's, it's a rail guided system, but with a, with a capsule and capsule system, so it's called, and uh, we, we can do yeah, the same experiments like in our uh, drop uh, drop tower. You see it's now some pictures, so probably you, you, know, you know figured out that the video was taken last last year. So uh, this this was in, in May as we did the you saw the hydraulic uh, system for for the rope drive system, and here you see the tower uh, with uh, with, uh, with the slides and uh, with here uh, a slider which is a, a test slider with uh, with uh, payload masters mimicking uh, payload masters. And here is our integration wall and connected to the uh, concrete wall of the existing drop tower. We connected uh, the GTP pool tower, and then we are able here to move up and downwards uh, uh, the slider. And then with with your experiment, you see here some insights of the concrete shell and and the vacuum steel tube. So that's here in between. We have we had to. Uh, install the, the hydraulic system, which is required to move up and downwards uh, the slider. I hope you can see a video. So since uh, last year we started with with uh, uh, it's moving not so good. Um, we started with uh, with the final assembly in our hall, and then now yeah, since last year we we started with the first test masses in the slider. And now we construct this slider, what you have seen in, at, uh, at the beginning. Um, and we hope that we are ready after summer to provide this facility also to, to our scientific users. And then probably next year, it could be also available then for drop tests for some testing. Yeah, so yeah, we, we look forward for this new facility. And uh, if you have also some ideas which requires hundreds of drops per day, uh, why not? Please submit your proposal. Yeah, that's the end of my presentation. I thank you very much. And again, I thank uh, very much UNOSA uh, yeah, to work with us together uh, to realizing this uh, uh, excellent uh, opportunity uh, for students and uh, for, yeah, for coming from UN member states. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Kohneman. I think the slides uh, with um, such uh, so many videos uh, that give us a full uh, perspective of the opportunity. So also, uh, dear participants, if you have any questions to, to Dr. Kahneman, please leave them in the chat box. OK, so next, uh, Ms. Azuki Molly will give you uh, more details of uh, announcement of uh, opportunity and application form. Uh, dear participants, if you are interested in, in uh, applying this opportunity, uh, this introduction is very important and very useful. So stay tuned and don't hesitate to take uh, to ask more questions. Also, we will have another session in the afternoon uh, starting from uh, 1630 uh, Central European time. Uh, so if you missed uh, the beginning of the webinar, so please uh, follow the afternoon session. Uh, you can find the link on our uh, job test website. OK, Azuki, uh, you have the floor. Thank you, Wenbin. I hope everyone sees my screen right now. 
Um, this is announcement of opportunity, which you can find in our website, um, the eighth round website. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to share the link again. Maybe my colleague Wimbin or Jorge could put that up. Um, it's it was issued this morning. It was it got on our website this morning, so I know you don't have you didn't have time to review it beforehand, so I will um, go through it with you. Um, three things I'd like to explain is may maybe some of you have already read um, the announcement of opportunity or forms for our past drop test um, opportunities um, from this round. One, I'd like to say that the schedule has changed as Thorben explained um, through a lot of your feedbacks. Um, we noticed that we needed to change the schedule to accommodate more students. Um, we used to have it in um, fall, so now we have changed the schedule to have the experiments in an earlier um, early summer. So that is one thing that has changed. Second, the application form has changed. Um, honestly, it has become um, become a little bit difficult. I mean, what I mean by difficult is you have more um, parts that you will need to fill in. However, it is um, all information that you will need when you think about your project. So it might be a lot of work, but you still have five months. So please make sure to fill in everything. And a third, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, the past rounds we only had four drops, but now you have five drops. So that's one more opportunity that you have. So basically, these are the three main points that have changed compared to our former rounds. OK, now I'd like to dive into the announcement of opportunity. Um, so this document is basically the summary of everything. I'm going to just go over the places that I've highlighted. So. Um, 10, expected profile of applicants. So in the application form, we will ask for the head, the team leader, to fill in the application form. So for that, um, please make sure that that person will need to be the head of the Research Institute Public Organization or groups who are university professors or postdoctoral researchers with a team of bachelor, master, and PhD or PhD students. Next, 11, number of selected applicants. So the team should consist of one academic supervisor, one team leader who is a professor, postdoc, or PhD, with up to four students who are, um, who are from the member states of the United Nations. And one thing I'd like to emphasize is that the teams may be larger, so you can have more than four students on your team. However, the financial support that I will mention later, which is in section 16, is only applicable to the one team leader and four students. So please make sure to keep that in mind. The timeline and the application of the selection process. So it opened today. The deadline for the application submission is on the 30th of June, so you basically have uh, five months. The selection will be done in the next month, so we will select during July. And then the when you are chosen, when you are the winner, the preparation for your experiment will start. So it will start from August and last until May. During, the, um, during this development process, we will ask for you to turn in the prog um, experiment progress report and you will have some reviews. So you will be in touch and in a lot of communication with um, ZARM. And as you can see, Thorben is there to support you all the way. So um, you will be very busy. After that, um, we will have the experiment series in June. Um, currently, we have scheduled it from to be the 20th of June until the 1st of July. Honestly, um, we have the corona situation going on, so we are not sure exactly if the dates will be like this. Um, for example, the drop test winner for the seventh round, um, they won in 2020, but they still haven't been able to um, do their um, uh, experiment. However, um, of course, we will be in touch with you and we will decide on a date, but currently we've um, booked um, the drop tower for 20th of June to July 1st, so please um, keep that open. And next, after all the experiments have been done, you will need to submit the final experiment report at the end of September. And what I'd like to emphasize is, yes, um, the drop tower experiment, um, this program ends at the end of September. However, if you publish any um, journals, um, any publications, if you um, present at any uh, webinar, event, um, workshop, please let us know. Um, 
it's not only that we want to know what's um, happening, but we can help promote that you uh, presented there or you issued a paper or something. So please let us know, um, us meaning UNUSA and ZARM. Um, we would be happy to um, hear about all of the results and your success about the program. Next, I'd like to go into the eligibility criteria. So the Drop Test Fellowship Program is open to research teams from research institutes, universities, and other public organizations that are located in the member states of the United Nations. Um, yes, and applicants um, must be able to show that their respected entities support um, their project. So make sure that it's not only just you students, make sure that your whole organization, it has approved of joining drop tests. So um, I will show you later, but you will need a letter of endorsement and some signs and seals. And um, last but not least, the balanced participation of women and men in teams, as well as supervising pro, um, positions is encouraged. So we would like to see um, inclusivity here. Next is a selection criteria. Um, as Thorben explained earlier, um, the selection board will be of us three organizations, and we will be assessing through 10 criteria as listed. The first eight criteria are most, um, the first seven, I would say, the criteria are mostly about the technical um, parts of the experiment. The, uh, the eighth one is about the communication dissemination plan, so how you try to promote um, your opportunity, how you try to engage the community about your um, wonderful science experiment. So that's one thing. Nine is inclusiveness. As I've mentioned earlier, we'd like to see uh, balanced, um, uh, balanced participation. So it is written there, but in case of proposals with the same score, the shares of men and women in teams will be compared. And the proposal with higher participation women will rank higher. So definitely, as I mentioned earlier, today is International Day of Women and Girls in Science. So we'd like to see a lot of women and girls in participating in this opportunity. And last but not least, I've been emphasizing this way too much, but we will definitely check the link between the project and the sustainable development goals. So please make sure to study, um, well, not study, but like go over the sustainable development goals homepage. Please make sure to check the goals, the targets, and the indicators. C, requirements for experimentation. This is extremely important. You have to go over these documents. The first one there is the ZARM Drop Tower User Manual. And when you um, develop, when you um, design your uh, experiment, you have to be compliant with these um, with the things written in this manual. So please, please, please read this manual. And under that, you can find more information about how the drop tower works or what is the catapult system. There's a lot of information there you can find on that website. Um, please make sure to check that. For the schedule, um, I've explained it, so I will skip. The financial report, uh, the financial support, I've um, seen some questions about it, so I'll explain it again. But what will, what the teams need to, uh, what the teams need to finance by themselves is basically you need to develop your experiment by yourself and you will need to bring it to Bremen by yourself. Uh, by yourself, meaning you will need to fund the, uh, uh, the sending, like the travel expenses for bringing the satellite, uh, sorry, not satellite, experiment. So as you can see, UN USA will offer financial support for travel purposes. And as I've mentioned earlier, this is only to the one team leader and four, um, four team members. So UNUSA will not bear the expenses for the preparation, transport and shipping, as well as the insurance for the experiment. So please make sure that you have that covered. The drops in the catapult launches are sponsored by DLR, so um, you will not need any fees for that. Um, the technical support is provided by ZARM and that is also free of charge for this wonderful opportunity. For the stay of the student, student team in Bremen, um, as you saw in Thorben's um, presentation, ZARM will provide free of charge on-site apartments and also um, for the student 
uh, for the, sorry, the team leader, um, they will be accommodated by a nearby hotel, which shall be covered by us. So basically, um, it's all written in number 16 financial support, so please go over it. Uh, but please make sure that you understand that in some parts of the um, for like the developing and bringing this out, uh, bringing the experiment to Germany is um, your responsibility. OK, um, this is it for the announcement of opportunity. Um, it's not a very long document, so please, please, please make sure to read it again and again and again. Um, there's a lot of detail, I know, but um, it, it's written very clear. Um, Thorben, is there anything to add to what I've just shared? No, I have nothing to, to add. Thank you. Thank you. OK, now I am going to share. Uh, sorry, I should have skipped down. I'm going to share the application form. Sorry, I'm not very good at sharing. Bear with me. OK. So I hope you are seeing the application form. This is also on the website. Um, I have posted it as a Word file. Um, the instructions are all here. Please make sure to read it. One thing I'd like to emphasize is um, in the parts that I will be explaining, there is M and O. So M is mandatory. So um, you need to um, make sure that it's filled. For O, these are optional, but if you are relevant, if you are applicable to the information that's there, it, it kind of becomes an M. So please make sure that you fill that out as well. OK, so going through the application form. First is basic information, which is clear project title, executive summary. So when we have things like no more than 150 words, please make sure that you put it in the 150 words, so the executive summary. OK, for this page, I'd like to emphasize that this is the only page that we will be asking for an actual scan of your uh, the document. So the other pages, we would ask for you to generate the document, this Word document, into a PDF. So that's just generating. But for this page, for the certificate page, since we will be asking for signs and seals of the organization, please make sure to scan that page out. So you will be sending us two separate PDFs, if you know what I mean. So here, um, please, um, for the project coordinator, who, who is like the team leader, um, we, we will need the information of that and that also that the applying organization, so which um, wherever the project coordinator or team leader belongs to, that the head of that organization is approving that um, the team is um, participating in drop tests. So we will need the signature and the seal of that organization. And if your team is um, constructed of two or more organizations, um, please make sure to bring in all the signatures and seals of the organizations that are participating. So if you have two teams, we need two signatures and two um, seals. And please make sure that um, this page is scanned. And um, if there's three organizations, please um, copy paste um, this part and add and give us three um, signs, uh, signatures and uh, seals. OK, um, from here, this is relatively clear um, information about the applying organization, the project coordinator. Um, please include your mini CV. Um, you don't have to tell us everything about your life. Um, just tell us about um, the relevant um, things that are relevant to um, your experiment. For the team members, um, there's only one box, but um, I believe you will maybe I have at least four. And if you have more than four, just keep copy pasting this um, box and give us all the information that is listed here. So this whole box and the mini CV for all the team members. Going on, proposal abstract. This is the abstract, so give us a brief description of the experiment, including the relevance of microgravity, um, the importance of utilizing the drop tower, the drop tower mode, the expected results. So please give us an abstract here. Here is a mission statement. Um, please give us one or two sentences maximum about how capacity build, how this experiment will lead and contribute to um, capacity building in your country. So this is just one or two sentences, but give us a mission statement. 
Second, uh, second, 4.2 objectives. This is also M. I, I think all the ones are M. Please list the objectives of the proposed experiment. So wh when you write this down, please use SMART, which is specific, measurable, achievable, uh, relevant, and time bounded. So um, give us a list of objectives that can be, um, give us a list of objectives. OK, this is the part that I've been um, saying and repeating a lot. 4.3 relevance to the sustainable development goals. So please um, make sure that you give us a link between your experiment and the SDGs. As I explained earlier, drop test contributes to SDG 4, 8 and 9. But the application of your experiment can lead to if it's medical research, it can go for um, SDG goal number three, if it's about water or like, as I explained earlier, there are a lot of links that you can um, bring in. So please make sure that you write how um, your project will contribute to the SDGs. 4.4 outcomes and deliverables, which is clear. 4.5 novelty, uniqueness and possible evolution. So tell us how um, relevant the microgravity and versatility of the experiment is, the progressiveness, the possible evolution. Next part is O, description of cooperation. So if it is a joint proposal, this is an M. Um, if it is a joint proposal, um, you must write the roles and responsibilities of each of the organizations. Um, if you're just applying with your university or your institute, um, this is an O, so you will not need to fill this in. Work, down, uh, work breakdown structure, um, please include uh, the roles of your um, the partners and the team members for the different work packages. Moving on, requirements, um, we have three, mission, design, and operational. For the mission, please let us know the requirements of each variable that you will be measuring in the experiment. For design, please let us know the outline and insert a list of design requirements. And as I've um, mentioned earlier, please note that the design has to be compatible with the Bremen Drop Tower user manual. So please, please, please make sure to read this manual before you start designing your project. 4.3, operational requirements. Please select the preferred drop tower mode and also include the other relevant operational requirements that you will be needing. And this also has to be compliant with the Bremen Drop Tower user manual. So please make sure to check that out as well. OK, moving on. Five is about the experiment specifications. So for 5.1.1, please um, use graphs and tables uh, such as the this is an example table. 5.1 is an example, but please give us information about the parameter values and units of the mass dimensions the things that are listed here. So it says your text here. It doesn't have to be text. I mean, it, please um, bring in graph table, something that could be something that is very organized and very easy to look at. 3D view, external dimensions. These are some things that you may not know at the moment. I mean, you, you haven't developed it. Um, you're still in the early phase, but um, please insert as much information as you know as possible. So front view, side view, bird's view, how you how it should look like. It may be really hard to describe um, in detail, but please give us the more information, the better. So it's the same for external dimensions. OK, on um, 5.2.1, um, this is about system block diagram. So please let us know the subsystems that are related, uh, so the subsystems that you'll be using and how they are related to the variables. 5.3, technical heritage. Um, I think it's relatively clear. Six, assembly, integration, and testing. So 6.1.1 is a description of, of assembly facilities. So please let us know that the facilities you'll be accessing to assemble the experiments. And 6.1.2 is letting us know about the facilities that you will be using for testing. So if it's in-house, um, there might, um, if it's in-house, it's information about you, but if you're going somewhere to do the assembly or if you're going somewhere to do the testing, please let us know about the institutions that you're working with. OK, moving on, verification. So we set three requirements, mission design, operation, 
And now we need information about how you are going to verify these requirements. So please make sure to in insert that information there. Okay, um, schedule. This is a 7.1 is development schedule. So please provide us a schedule of the development phase. So including milestones, pass fail criteria, and include all the work packages and allocation of each team member. So it says your text here again, but please um, include a Gantt chart or anything that um, is organized and that it's easy to see about, um, see how your development schedule is going to look like. Um, 7.2 is about the experiment schedule. So this is more about when you're um, here, when you're in Bremen. So please provide us with information about how long it takes for you to prepare um, the checkout um, activation, um, how much time you will need in between the five drops. So please um, let us know about what you plan for the experiment schedule. And as I said earlier, some of the things you might not um, fully understand now, but please include as much information as possible here. Okay, budget, um, 8.1 is cost. So please provide information about the cost, including the price of the parts, personal costs, facility costs, operation costs, travel expenses. Um, please include as much information as possible. And for 8.2, it's how you are going to get, uh, how you're going to cover the costs that are explained in 8.1. So how you're going to secure the budget. So it's basically talking about this um, budget plan. Okay, and nine is transportation to Germany. So as I've explained earlier, this is your responsibility to bring your experiment to Germany. So please provide us with information concerning the transport, custom arrangements, and anything related to the transport to Germany. 10 is feasibility and risk analysis. So 10.1 is feasibility analysis. Um, provide arguments on the feasibility of your project and its technical specifications, research content. So basically give us, um, tell us how feasible your project is. And 10.2 is risk analysis. So this will be providing us a description of the risks that you might face and their likelihood and the impact. So um, please make sure that you have, you've done analysis on feasibility and risks. Okay, and these are the last three parts. 11 is communications and dissemination plan. Um, as I've mentioned a bit earlier, we will um, we want um, to have a social impact with this experiment. We don't want you to just finish within your university. We want you to help educate your community, um, do a social media campaign to involve um, the media and you know bring out the best out of your um, opportunity here. So we'd like to see a, a communications plan. And if you don't have any idea, we have a webinar that is just for you. Um, last November, maybe October, I'm sorry, I forgot. Um, we had a webinar dedicated to this. Um, we did a series of webinars actually to provide information about how to build a wonderful application form. So I recommend that you go through the whole series. But in one of those um, webinars, we had one dedicated to communication, so how to build an effective and um, very nice communication plan. So um, maybe that webinar could help you, but it's really about how to engage the crowd, how to do your social media campaign, how to reach out to the community. So please make sure to um, involve some kind of information about that. 12 is supporting documents. So um, please list, give us a list of any documents that will support your application. We don't need you to um, put it in here. Um, we just need the list and please send those um, documents as an attachment to the PDF files. So here we just need the list. And finally, um, 13 is abbreviations and references. As you know, the space industry and I, I, I believe the microgravity, hypergravity industry everywhere is full of jargon. So we would need a list of abbreviations and references to help us understand uh, what you're saying in your um, application form. So please list, give us a list here. Okay, um, this is the application form. I do understand that it is a lot of information for you to digest and some of the information, as I said, is may not be clear to you, but please make sure to read it again and give us 
the most information that you can out of this. OK, um, is there anything to add from my colleagues? Thorben, I'm sorry, I'm talking way too much. Is, is there anything that you'd like to add? No, thanks, uh, Hazuki. But I think there, there were some questions, so I okay. think we should start to, to answer those questions. Perfect, thank you. So I'll give the floor back to Wembe. Yeah, um, Azuki, thank you very much. Uh, so um, yeah, yeah, everybody, you can see that the application form and the uh, yeah, it's a little bit complicated, but please uh, just as Hazuki said, read it uh, again and again and again. OK, so so let's start the, the start the question and answer uh, session. So first, uh, yeah, let me check. We have uh, several questions as, as, as very good. Um, so first one um, from uh, Diana. Uh, I have a question to speakers. What are the application of uh, microgravity? Um, yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's much. So so for example, um, like uh, uh, Dr. Corbin uh, described in his uh, slides, uh, combustion, fundamental physics, uh, flood dynamics, astrophysics, yeah, the many. So uh, I will uh, leave this uh, question to uh, Dr. Kornbin. Maybe you can uh, give a more details for, uh, on this on this question. Yeah. Yeah. So applications of microgravity. So as I said, first fundamental research is important. So you have a phenomenon you would like to investigate something. And also for that, you have to develop, for instance, some instrument which might, uh, yeah, which should work in microgravity conditions. So that's, uh, yeah, it's it's also a possibility how to 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 develop new application. But applications of microgravity, I think you you mean, yeah, you mean uh, what what can be done in microgravity. So an important thing is uh, if you consider material sciences, you can also create new materials, for instance. Yeah, so you have no buoyancy forces or no sedimentations of, of particles in a in a fluid phase, for instance. And then if you have solidification, so then you can create new materials, especially with uh, new, yeah, or not new, so uh, with uh, with um, um, more homo homogeneous materials because uh, you have yeah you have not that. Uh, sedimentation and and we at SAM we have a, 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 a material sciences group which would like to create electroluminescence material. So better material due to the use of other uh, with the use of microgravity to create new materials which can uh, emit light with less power, for instance. And this can be done with a have if you have a more uh, or a better or a homogeneous. Uh, 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 material, uh, ground material, for instance. Yeah, so there are plenty of, of things you can do. And uh, yeah, please have a look at our website, look at the projects, and this might be inspiring you and what different kind of applications are possible. Also, space is, uh, fluid physics is very important because it's not so trivial to pump fluids in space. Please consider this as well. Yeah. Then, yeah. That was for my yeah, part. Thank you, thank, thank you, you. Dr. Kornbin. Um, OK, I will move to the second question. It's uh, uh, from uh, Angel. Um, she asked, can anybody apply to this opportunity? Um, yeah, I think um, as Azuki mentioned in his uh, uh, introduction, uh, yeah, I will repeat here. Um, yeah, uh, you can find it in um, Announcement of opportunity in uh, uh, chapter 15. Uh, the job uh, job test fellowship program is open to research team from research institute, universities, and other public organizations that are located in member states of uh, United Nations. And each team, yeah, each team should consist uh, of up to four bachelor, master, and or uh, PhD students. Who must be endorsed by their academic supervisor, uh, which is team leader. And uh, yeah, please uh, read this paragraph and also um, below uh, that applicants must be uh, able to show that they have their respective entities support through a letter of endorsement from their entities directors. 
so so I think as uh, as answered uh, your question, Andrew, uh, do you have any uh, anything to add, Azuki or um, Dr. Cornabin? No. Um, no. Uh -oh. um, please read the announcement of opportunity. It's very clear there. If you have any questions, um, you can email us at, um, from our website. Okay. Okay. So I will move to next question. Uh, the next question is also from Anjo. Um, uh, she asked, uh, is this opportunity covering the cost of taking the experiment to Germany, for example, expedition and uh, custom fees? Um, yeah, I think this is also introduced in uh, uh, Azuki's introduction. Uh, uh, maybe Azuki, you can you can say it again. Yeah, um, <laughs> um, it's written in announcement of opportunity, but for bringing your experiment to Bremen, it is um, up to you. Um, what I mean is, is, is your responsibility, so we will not be supporting any of the financial fees or customs for that. So please um, take your time, um, do some research and make sure that um, you can bring it to Bremen. And if you um, have any um, problems or if you have any questions, we are happy to connect you with our alumni um, network. So if you have any yeah, questions from that you want to ask to them, um, you can let us know and we can um, connect you. Um, may I add uh, something? Yeah, sure. So uh, please consider also the option so that you, once you travel to, to Germany, you can also accommodate uh, some equipment in your in your luggage. Yeah, so this was also done by uh, former prop test teams and please inform me in advance and I can help you because then I have just to inform our customs here at Bremen uh, that uh, that this customs is or this, this equipment is used for a, for a, a drop tower FC experience series and will not stay in Germany so that you take it back to to your country. So then uh, uh, it it's, uh, could be clarified with our customers. So this is already done. So if you can, yeah, put your your equipment in a uh, into your luggage, so it's it's still fine. Yeah. So then we have not to consider uh, additional costs for customs. Yeah, Just an advice. It's, yeah, it's quite helpful, uh, Dr. Um Okay, let's move to uh, next question. Next question is from uh, Rita Peles. Um, yeah, she uh, asked. Mm, I have question concerning the two uh, mod. Uh, I think as a, a drop and a catapult a launch. Any suggestion on when to use one or another, and can the acceleration of the catapult break the experiment? So uh, this hmm. technical question, I will put. I will leave it to to you, Dr. Coleman. Yeah. So. And the difference between uh, the catapult mode and the drop mode is obviously the exhalation phase because uh, when the capsule impact uh, uh, takes place, so we have uh, the same uh, deceleration forces around uh, 42 G and maximum 50 G. But this is not so critical. As I said also that uh, personally, I, I work with very complex laser systems and they withstand more than 500 drops in our drop tower. So it's please uh, do not be so afraid to use hardware. You can use commercial hardware. You should emphasize a little bit here so that uh, we keep an eye on, on how to mount it and how it's constructed. But uh, usually you can use uh, uh, commercial hardware. A good advice is also if you can send your hardware with, uh, via post, you can always drop it in our drop tower because uh, you don't know what happened with your with your packet. And the difference is the exhalation phase. Yeah, uh, come back to the catapult. So that means in drop you have a 1g, 0g transition, so directly from normal gravity to, to microgravity. But uh, with the catapult, itself, you have uh, uh, in, indeed uh, 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 an exhalation phase which lasts 250 milliseconds and uh, to accelerate the capsule to a velocity of 170 kilometers per hour in, in, in this 250 milliseconds. That means that we have an acceleration of up to 30 G, but this is also not so uh, um, critical for experiments because the movement of the uh, during the acceleration phase uh, follows a sine curve by loss, uh, a sine, sine curve. So that means we have a harmonic function how to move. So this was this is the tricky thing at, at, at on our catapult that, that we 
do not disturb the experiment during the excavation phase too much because then you cannot use make use of the uh, uh, of the of the microgravity phase afterwards. So we we have a very smooth transition from the exhalation phase to the microgravity. There are also some videos on on YouTube where we look uh, at Ballantine space glass. So you see a, a, a glass uh, uh, by using our catapult. You see a glass on our platform, and there's no sloshing, much sloshing. So you see it's a very harmonic movement and it will not destroy your experiment. It depends a little bit on what kind of experiment you have. So, uh, but uh, also fluid experiments are, are, are physical. Yeah, so there's no sloshing or very less sloshing. And after uh, a certain period in microgravity, we say one and a half seconds, you have the work, really the perfect uh, environment. So it will not harm your experiment. I hope this answers your question. Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, thank you, Dr. Koneman. Uh, yeah, Rita, please check the Dharm YouTube channel, uh, which I uh, typed it in the chat box. So uh, I saw the next questions also from uh, Rita. Uh, she asked, um, I thought there was a vacuum inside the tower. So how do you do the combustion experiments? Uh, are you allowed to use hard art uh, materials? <laughs> yeah, it's a very yeah. interesting question. Yeah. yeah. So we have the vacuum in, in the in the tower. That's right. But we use capsules. So that means that uh, the capsules are pressure sealed. Inside the uh, the capsules, we have a one bar nominal pressure. So no vacuum. So uh, your experiment can be conducted under normal condition or in case of combustion, uh, combustion experiments or other experiments, we have dedicated combustion uh, chambers and hazardous material is allowed. We will do a, a safety plan together with you. So that is also advantage of the drop tower. So less persons are involved uh, because the capsule is in the tower and the tower is evacuated. We have a vent line system also in case of, uh, uh, of a critical material, we can release gases out of of the capsule. There are a lot of uh, options for combustion experiment and especially at some we have our own combustion groups. Uh, they uh, they have done a lot of experiments in this in this way. So hazardous material materials are fine as long as we can check uh, in, in advance uh, how yeah wh what kind of safety we require to conduct your experiments. Yeah, OK, thank you. And uh, next question is from uh, Dinah Cruz Monterio. Uh, yeah, um, thanks, Dr. Koneman. Would it be possible to have a CAD design of the capsule? Yeah, the question is for yes, you. for sure. So once, yeah, uh, yeah, the winning team will select the, uh, the winning team will receive then a step file of our capsule so that you can start with the 3D modeling if, if required. And, and you've, you will find also further information about the dimension of, of our platform and, and the capsule uh, and our user manual. But yes, it's, uh, yes, we will provide you then a, a, a CAD file uh, in, the, in the step format. So that is a, a CAD exchange format so that you can read uh, our, uh, yeah, or can have a 3D model of our capsule. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Koneman. And Next question is uh, also from Diana um, she asked, is the uh, Gravit, uh, Gravit Tower Pro, just you mentioned at the end of your presentation, also available in this opportunity? I hope so. Yeah, so our plan is to finalize all work uh, at this new facility. Um, yeah. And, late summer this year and at the end of this year it should be an operational mode also for uh, external or for, for, for scientific users of our drop tower system. So I think if nothing happened yeah, uh, in, the, in the meanwhile, I, I think yes, it will be available uh, for drop tests uh, next, mid of next year. So it's, uh, it's uh, I would say 90%, uh, I don't know. So. Um, we will see. So if you consider the gravity tower, so then you should 
look that your experiment will be can be accommodated in, in the short drop capsule or catapult capsule because uh, this is a capsule type we can use then in all three uh, facilities here. So gravity tower, drop mode and catapult mode. Yeah, 90% is a really great chance. <laughs> Yeah, okay. about the 10, 10 percent are, are left. So um, I, I am, I'm not sure. We have to overcome also some issues with the COVID situation. Yeah, to deliver delivering uh, of hardware, I, I cannot promise uh, anything to 100 percent. Yeah. So, but okay, 90 sure. percent is, is is my guess. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think we have a last question. Yeah. Um, um, from Rita Paris. Uh, she asked, is there a limit on team members? I think this question, um, as we uh, talked, um, there will be uh, four students and one academic supervisor. And um, yeah, sure, you can have more members, but I don't know there should be a limit there. Uh, Azuki? Are you muted? Good. Sorry about that. Um, we don't have a limit, but um, as Wenbin explained, we have um, a, a budget. We have we can only provide financial support to the four members and the one um, team leader. So um, if your organization is willing to fund and you know pay for their expenses, um, we're, we're very happy to have as many um, team members as uh, as you can. Um, uh, however, I guess we will need to talk with Thorben and the members at ZARM because um, there might be um, a restriction of how many people can enter into the facility or whatever. So um, do you have any numbers right now, Thorben? I mean, yeah, usually usually um, I, I would say so if we uh, we use also our integration hall for some uh, uh, celebration and, and some events. So I would say 200 persons are the upper limit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I would say some, some, uh, 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 I, I'm, I was joking. So uh, <laughs> usually, um, usually a team consists of, yeah, I would say eight to ten, ten is also, but if you have too much people, so you see that the, the, lim the, the space at the integration is also a little bit limited. And, and if you work with, with four people directly at the capsule, that's enough. But if you have support with, with, uh, with uh, software engineers or something like that. For, for those uh, people, we have also some separated space. So I would say yeah, there's no limit, but uh, some, I, I think over 10, it makes no sense anymore. Yeah, yeah for, for, this, uh, yeah. for this aspect, I think we uh, explained enough, but uh, I think maybe I wonder, uh, Rita asked if we have a limit, for example, he uh, she cannot find uh, four uh, students, maybe two or three, is is okay for application? Yeah, as long as as long as we have two, yeah, the supervisor and one student. So that's uh, I think it's the absolute minimum. But I I guess the educational value is also important, and if more people will benefit from from this. Uh, uh, from the participation, so then we should, uh, we will, I think we, we would consider uh, then a team with four people with, with if anything is equal, yeah, anything else is equal. Yeah, I saw that uh, she typed something in the chat box, so I think we are fine. I think we have uh, several questions, so first, um, the question from uh, Roberta, um, yeah, this one, um, can you uh, give a recommendation for an experiment uh, where to start learning about what can be done? So, uh, dear uh, reporter, I think that um, yeah, you can find a lot of uh, uh, experiments, examples on uh, uh, Zarm's website, and also you can you can read uh, the previous uh, winners uh, experiment. I hope that could give you some um, uh, inspiration. So. Um, but also, I will give this uh, question to uh, Dr. Kahneman. Uh, so, Kone uh, Dr. Kahneman, um, could you um, give us uh, give uh, give us some answers? Yeah, um, yeah. So you you already mentioned. So please go on, on our website to give a first idea of what is possible at the Dr. So there are 
thousands of ideas which can be realized. So I also also said if you have uh, yeah, a kind of a complement in mind which should be tested under microgravity conditions, so to increase the technology readiness level, this is also an option. So it must be no kind of a scientific experiment. It could be also technology uh, technology experiment. Um, yeah, but I, I will only refer to to publications. Yeah, and look uh, to yeah to publications which which are also written on our website. Um, what what those teams have done so far, or what have what those teams have in mind. So yeah, there are many options. Yeah, but it depends on you. Yeah, what is what is your favorite thing? Yeah. Thank you, Thorben and Wenbin, if I may add. Um, currently, um, UNOSA is um, internally um, thinking about doing a webinar, a series of webinars about hypergravity, microgravity that can um, help all of you um, build, will have a better understanding of microgravity and hypergravity and to give you some ideas. So um, currently this is in discussion, but we'll, we plan to open the series if we can maybe next month or within the um, time that this um, application is open. So please make sure to check our website because we will be um, posting that on our website. But as Thorben said, I mean, if there's any ideas, I think you can just bring it to us and we're always looking for new innovative pro projects. So um, if you have any ideas, just shoot it at us. OK, uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, Sorben. Thank you, Atsuki. And uh, let's move to the next question. So next, uh, the second question is from uh, Daniel uh, Eastman. So uh, his question is, uh, what happens if an experiment does not work? Have there been any cases before? So uh, I have to give this uh, question to Dr. Kahneman. <laughs> so please. Yeah. Of course, we have all the cases that some experiments uh, did not work. Um, for sure, the, uh, it is also kind of experiences. Yeah, so um, you had you had something in mind. You have an experiment uh, in mind. Also, we take care about uh, the technical feasibility, so we ensure that it, sh it should work. And during the integration week, we will do anything th uh, that that it will work on ground. But also, you you should also show us that it works in your laboratory. But once it works in laboratory, so it makes it easier to to integrate it in our capsule and make uh, and yeah and make a successful experiment also in microgravity at our drop tower facility. So we will we will look. Of course, during microgravity, some unexpected things may, may happen. Yeah, some yeah uh, there are a lot of examples and and then we will together analyze what what was probably the failure or so on. And then during between the flights, we have more or less 24 hours. Yeah. Um, so then we, we will do our best uh, to to prepare the experiment uh, for the next time and, and do it better. Yeah, for sure. There we had some some failures, also technical failures, some some unexpected scientific uh, behaviors so that you have to change your, your your mind. But this is the usual way here at the drop tower and yeah. Don't be too shy, uh, or to uh, to say uh, to say then. Oh no, I, I I don't want to to submit my application because it could not work. No, that's the usual way forward. Uh, yeah, uh, all all mistakes will bring you also later on to a to a big success. Yeah, so that's what I that's my comment. Okay. okay, okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Corbin. Uh, yeah, uh, let's move to the next question. Uh, this question is from uh, uh, Helmut Meyer. Uh, he's asking, um, is it possible to test adaptive learning? Um, um, I think he is uh, inspired by the ro uh, robotic arm experiment, and he uh, also asked uh, if we uh, know the robotic arms uh, yield any surprising uh, result. Uh, yeah, Helmut. Uh, Helmut, uh, I would suggest that you can you can visit our website. The, there is a report of the uh, mm, the robot uh, robotic arms uh, the experiment and also. Um, yeah, the, the report of other uh, winners. Um, so uh, I will hand this uh, hand this question to Dr. Kornbin. 
Yeah, about yeah. the test adaptive learning, right? As I would say so this adaptive learning aspect could be a very good way for our new uh, facility, the gravity tower, because you have hundreds of times per day to do uh, experiments and repeat it. So, uh, so then uh, you can apply such things. So, but but you have to to emphasize the microgravity relevance of this adaptive learning. So probably moving a robotic arm in the same position and and yeah. But the idea is also to do it in a very precise way. Okay, yeah, that could be a way for uh, a way forward. Yeah, but. Uh, Okay. At the Bremen Drop Tower, so you have five options. So uh, in the new tower, you have hundreds of options, uh, I would say. But okay, so that will be also possible. Or you, you consider the microgravity time, so nine seconds. How often can you repeat your experiment within this time? That could be also uh, uh, yeah, an advice. Uh, yes, thank you. Um... Uh, Helmut, I think uh, uh, Dr. Conven answered your question uh, very uh, correctly. So, uh, Azuki and uh, Jorge, do you have any uh, comments about that? Do you want to add? No, nothing from me. Okay. Okay, so uh, let's move to the next question. Uh, this question is from Roberta Vilka Cruz. Uh, she's asking how much is the cost of an experiment? Uh, yeah, I already answered in the chat box. Um, yeah, the travel and accommodation for uh, winners is covered in this opportunity and uh, it says for four students and one academic advisor. Um, yeah, mm, and also the five uh, the five jobs or uh, catapult uh, launch uh, launch is uh, provided by uh, ZARM and the DLR. So, yeah, I think I think this is uh, answered uh, your question. Um, do you have any uh, comments you want to add? Maybe if you're asking about the cost of the experiment itself that you will develop, I think it will totally depend on yeah the experiment, what you plan to put in the subsystems. I mean, the, the payload, like what you're actually going to test. So honestly, um, we do not have a specific number and I guess it will um, depend on a region or like if you're working with a company or I think it depends on your partners as well. So we, we do not have a concrete um, number, but um, yeah, as um, when been mentioned, um, the fee besides that, I mean, for um, the accommodation for travel, all, all of that, as you can see, is covered. So that is um, the that is the cost that you really need to find the budget and you know the budget plan. So it's all in the application form. So yeah, we're we're sorry we don't have a specific number, but. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're interested, we can try to connect you with um, former drop test alumni or maybe um, Thorben can help you connect with um, people who've done experiments that if you have like a similar idea, maybe you can get a, a ballpark concrete, uh, not concrete, but ballpark amount. So um, if you're interested, um, drop us an email. But I, I think, yeah, the answer is that there's no like fixed number for that. Yeah, it really depends on your idea, your your proposal like that. Uh, Dr. Uh, Kornman, do you have any uh, comments no. to that? I totally agree with Hazuki. Yeah, so she said everything. Okay, so so uh, we have uh, the last question is: uh, Is there a maximum number of uh, application per uh, per research team? I think uh, Azuki has mentioned in the uh, application form. So uh, totally. Uh, four students and one uh, academic uh, supervisor will be uh, covered. And but yeah, there is no maximum number. I think. I think uh, it could be also the case that um, this uh, person means uh, or asked for applications. So how many uh, applications uh, or proposals uh, or other experiment ideas he can, uh, he can submit or he or she can submit. I think this was also the, the, the idea behind this, but I, I, we have not considered this that from one institution, yeah, can come more application, yeah, for sure, yeah. But yeah, please submit any application. So if if you have many ideas, please share your ideas with us, and 
if, if you have a very good idea and it uh, will be selected, so then, okay, it could increase the possibility to, <laughs> to be selected, yeah. But, yeah, thank you. okay, but uh, it must be a very, yeah, relevant uh, application, yeah. Please consider yeah, this. Yeah, sure. Okay, so, uh, I think we have finished all the questions. I will thank thank you, uh, Dr. Kornben, and uh, thank you, uh, Azuki, and uh, Jorge. Thank you.